Hey gamers, well, I debated for a very long time on whether I should make this video or not, and after much debate and watching several videos of several people having fun, I decided to make this video about what games I wanted to play at BGG Con, Spring Con this past uh, month. I didn't get to go. I was on and off like every other month, every other week. I was wanting to go so bad, but too many expenses. Couldn't justify leaving for that long. Really missed that convention. As you know, I was supposed to go last year, but this guy here, uh, you don't even trust this guy, do you? Look at this guy, he's so shifty. He's the reason I haven't gone in the past two years. Regardless, I digress. What I want to talk about today was, I did make a list of board games I wanted to play. Uh, one of them that I'm still putting on there is Viscounts of the West Kingdom. I like Architects of the West Kingdom. I like the idea of this game, the kind of Rondell-esque uh, world. I love the West Kingdom series so far, or the, or actually the, uh, I don't like Paladins. Paladins doesn't look that good, but maybe I'd try it out. But Viscounts looks good. It looks good, but it's one I want to play. Another one from my list from last year that kind of carries over is the board game called Vinyl. Again, easy worker placement as you're doing set collection. I love the idea of searching through records. I wish, I understand why they can't, you know, make, you know, for copyright infringement, make real live, you know, record albums. That'd be really awesome if they could do that. But they have to get fake albums and everything. But collecting, building your own vinyl collection for points. Now, the the scoring on this is, a, is very confusing to me. Even though I've seen playthroughs, I still am not so sure about the scoring, how that goes. But every time I see the game, I love the theme so much. <laughs> it may not be worth getting it all, but I definitely want to play it. So those were the two games, I uh, believe, that I had from last year. Yeah, that uh, I wanted to put on this year's one. Uh, so what were the other games? Well, in no particular order, I wanted to play Underwater Cities. Uh, this is one of the games that, in my collection, when I look it over, BGG says, what other games you may like? Underwater Cities is everywhere. I hear about it. You know, it seems like it's up my alley, but every time I watch a playthrough, whatever, it looks so boring. It looks so boring. But I've been wrong before, right? El, El Magnifico, uh, Lorenzo Magnifico, that one, that one looks super boring too. And then I played it and then I finally said, oh yeah, this is why it's good. I get it now. So maybe it'll click for Underwater Seas with me and maybe it won't. Either way, I'd like to nip that one in the bud. Another one that I've looked at that I get lots of referrals to on uh, BGG, is uh, Anno 1880, and I've looked at it, and I'll be honest, it looks interesting. It may look like something I would want. Um, I can't really put my finger on what's holding you back from just purchasing it or getting in a trade. I've come close a couple of times, but I've always held back on it. Uh, this is one that I feel like I really need to play to see. Like Again, it does feel like it's right up my alley, but I want to play it to make sure. So those are, those are a few that, you know, like I said, mainly from other people or not well mainly from board game geek i forgot those suggestions and want to knit those two in the bud and see if they're worth worth getting another one just because it looks like i'm going to be playing some solo games by myself since my board game group is kind of here and there right now uh is under falling skies uh when this first came out i almost got it i almost got it then i said oh wait solo game then no never mind uh, but then watching it played, it's like, oh man, that does seem like a lot of fun for a solo game like that. And I don't play hardly any, I have been playing some of my games solo now. I hate it. I hate it. But uh, I have to now because I don't, the game group doesn't meet as much as you used to. But uh, Under Falling Skies is meant to be solo. It looks like a really fun game, one I could get into. But I really do want to play this one on my own, of course, to see if I like it first. Other ones, uh, another one that I, uh, Modern Art by Ryan, Can no, is it Ryan Canetian? Canetian? Anyway, um, I should have looked this up, but Modern Art looks interesting. There's a new Japanese version that has even the classical art style, which I really love. This is like a bidding game slash set collection. And not that I need that in my collection, I, I don't really know, but I, I like the look of it. I, lo I love artwork. I have maybe one or two artwork games. Not that this would replace anything, or I don't think it would beat anything, but I want to play it and see. It seems like the fun factor's there, but is the replayability there? That's the thing I want to see. Um, you know, this is one that is on the spe it's kind of off the spectrum of games I'm interested in. Like, it's out there, I know it is, but 
it's not really a must buy item or I'm very curious. I'm somewhat curious about this. And I definitely would like to play and you have plenty of time to play games. What else are you going to do? Uh, other ones I'd like to play is Distilled. Uh, every time I look at it, it looks more and more interesting. This is one I hear great things about. A lot of people love it. Seems like viticulture in a way, in a way, instead of wine, you're uh, creating and selling alcohol. And that seems interesting. Again, I don't drink, but that doesn't stop me from playing viticulture. So distilled looks like a kind of beefed up version of viticulture. I may be wrong on that. I don't think there's that much work replacement in it. Either way though, it does look inter interesting enough to try. Another game that I know I'm not gonna get, but I do want to play in Star Wars Risk. Star Wars Risk is basically the cheap version of Queen's Gambit. I have Queen's Gambit. I love Queen's Gambit. I know someone who plays Star Wars Risk said, yeah, man, it was great, but Queen's Gambit beats it by a mile and a half. And I agree. I agree. It probably will. So it's, a, it's the poor man's version of Queen's Gambit. It's dealing with Return of the Jedi, which is one of my favorite movies. Some of the pieces look great on this, and it, it is one that I, I don't think it would ever replace Queen's Gambit, of course, for me, but I do want to play it once, and who knows? Maybe I'll like it, and maybe I'll bring it, uh, buy myself a copy, and uh, play that in, in tangent with uh, Queen's Gambit, but for right now, I don't think it's one I'd want to buy. I just want to play it. Um, is there any other games I'd want to play and not buy? No, I think that's it for that one. So let me move into the, the next circle here. These are games that I'm seriously thinking about. Well, one I was seriously thinking about. Now I'm okay on it. But it's uh, Last Light. Last Light uh, by... I can't remember his name now. Roy Kennedy. I cannot remember names. I should have written names now. But from the Dice Tower, I know. Uh, it looks all right. It looks very pretty. I, I had a friend of mine play this and give me a it's okay review. And it's like a 4X in under an hour. Okay, here's the thing. People try to sell me on Eclipse because it's Twilight Imperium in half the time. Brother, I don't need that. I'd rather play one game of Twilight Imperium than two of Eclipse. I've never played Eclipse, it's true. I've never played it. Maybe I should add that to the trial list. But I wouldn't want to play Eclipse. I like the length of Twilight Imperium. I like how it's heavy. Now, why am I interested in Last Light? Well, if it can give me that 4X experience in an hour, that would be fun. That would be interesting. I'll be honest, the look of the board looks, it, it's its weird. It, it's very boring, the board is, but the pieces, I mean, yeah, they made some, especially the premium edition. I never, um, I saw it play, it seems okay, but I, I would like to test out myself. Again, this may not be one I'd want to buy, but I'm definitely interested in playing. And who knows, maybe it's a good game and maybe I'll add to my collection. Uh, another one that I almost got in a trade and then backed out on it was uh, Crystal Palace. This game looks so interesting, but it also feels like it has a money problem, meaning it's almost impossible to get money. I hear that complaint on a lot of the reviews and comments about the game. And honestly, I had this loaded up in a cart to trade. Uh, with someone. I was about to get this game in because other than that, I mean, you're setting the dice to wherever you want and that's what you're paying for. And I mean, yeah, money should be tight, but there's hardly any way to generate money. There seems to be one spot that generates money and it's a no-brainer. You should go as many times as you can to that spot to get as much money because money's super tight. But there should be another way to help, you know, get some more income or something. Not to say no one, no one needs to be super rich playing this game, but if money is only tied to one action on the board, and every, that's the most important action ever, the game seems to be a little broke in that sense. But I don't know. Other than that, it looks wonderful. It looks like a wonderful game. But I definitely need to try this one to see if my uh, suspicions are correct. Or maybe I should go ahead and get it. Another one that's high on my list, oddly enough, is the Tudors, or Tudor. I've always been interested in this game. <laughs> but, again, I've seen one playthrough that sucks. I don't think they did a good job with it. And I hear some good comments. It seems like over the years people have been kinder to the game. And it just looks interesting how you're getting the, the different rings that give you different abilities when they're putting different fingers that give you different moves to move up these tracks to you're trying to wait in line to get in the school boards and take actions to move up these tracks to get uh, appointments to get victory points. The mechanisms seem interesting, but yet I've still never seen a good playthrough that makes me understand what exactly is going on. I want to know what's going on here. So I want to tackle it, look at those rules pretty deep, play a few games and see. Because I'm out of all the games, this is the closest one 
that almost came into my collection but didn't because I really want to see how it's played. Another one would be Chai. This game is out of print right now. I think it's looking at getting a reprint. And for a one hot second, like if uh, if my trade would have gone through a little bit earlier, I probably would have owned this game. But I'm glad I held off on it because it is super expensive because it's out of print right now. Um, I love tea games. I love the look of this game. The idea, of the game, it looks very simple for a game that's super expensive. So, you know, that's that's one thing holding me off. But if it's a good game, then I'll wait for a reprint and definitely get that. I think I could do that. But again, this is another game. And I know it came up with a, like a high tea expansion. And I'm not sure. I think it brings more cards into the game. I'm not sure. Like I said, I, I didn't look much into that one, but I saw it. And I was like, well, okay, I want to see it all together and see if this is something that would work and if I need to keep an eye on it to get it in the future. But that looks very interesting. Um, another one here that looks very interesting. Well, these last three. I'm looking for a game to replace Time Stories. Time Stories is one of my favorite games of all time. My best, one of the best gaming experiences of my life has been playing Time Stories with both of my groups. I love it. I want another one of those type games. Here are the three that may, may replace it. Not replace it, but just kind of renew my love for these whatever they're called, legacy one and done games. Uh, Micro Macro Crime City looks like Where's Waldo, the board game. I really, we're trying to solve a mystery, looking at a big puzzle of all these drawings and one big map. That looks to be a lot of fun. This is also something maybe my wife could play. Uh, she likes detective, whodunit stuff. And there's like three of these big boxes, several little, well not several, maybe a handful of mini expansions for it, where you're looking at different things there. That looks interesting. I'd like to play maybe one or two and see if that's the game for me. Another one would be Chronicles of Crime. This one is very high on the list. Another one I thought about trading for and getting. I like the virtual reality. You're scanning the QR codes. You're looking through your phone around the room and you know trying to locate all the clues in the room you see. That looks very interesting. What a neat idea. I know they have, I don't know if they're building some story, but I know they have past, present, and future storylines or something like that. I haven't looked that much into it, but looking at just the base game and knowing there's other expansions, they didn't just abandon after the first you know, game. That one definitely looks interesting, but again, I gotta play it. I gotta play it at least one game to see if it's something that I want to invest in. Because if so, I'll definitely get it. And the last one, this is going to be an expensive, <laughs> an expensive one to go all in on. But I hear Unsettled is really good too, like story-wise and everything. And again, I love stories. I like macro stories, but I don't think anyone does that anymore. Um, Time Stories did, and everyone hated it, except for me. Um, and I don't know if Time Stories is ever going to get another expansion ever again. We may, be, we may have seen the end of Time Stories. There's been literally nothing mentioned about this game since Cavendish came out last year. No announcements for anything. All mums the word. And not that they're hiding it. Top secret project. It's like they just want us to forget about it. And I don't want to forget about Time Stories, but maybe one of these three games will. But anyway, that was my list. I didn't get to go to BGG Spring Con. I am very bummed about that. Of course, there always is BGG Con in November, but... Oh, go away. I don't know. I don't think I can make that. Or could I? Let me know in the comments, folks, what games would be on your wish list if you were attending one of these board game conventions, and I will see you next time.